Okay, so this is, what page is this, 342? No. Three, yeah, 342. 8-3. So, last week you guys learned um, about multiplying, uh, um, let's see here, a whole number by uh, a fraction. Let's say it was 8. And you knew then to turn it into a fraction because that's what you need to do to multiply a whole number by a fraction. You just put a 1 underneath the whole number. Well, they're doing the same thing in this lesson, except they're just reversing the order. So it might be 8 times 1 third instead of 1 third times 8. So the steps are exactly the same. There's, there's really no difference. Did I hit start recording? Stop. Yeah, good, I did. All right, just making sure. All right, so uh, this very first one here, it says I need to find 7 times 3 quarters. 7 times 3 quarters. So you guys should know by now, you just simply take the 7, turn it into a fraction, and then go ahead and multiply it by 3 quarters. Then you should remember, again, you just multiply straight across. 7 times 3 is 21. 1 times 4 is 4. Then you ask yourself, how many times does 4 go into 21? It goes in 5 times. There's 1 left over, so the answer would be 5 and 1 quarter. Now, in this one here, in the example, they actually just put seven circles and colored in three quarters of each one. So each one of these has one, two, three quarters, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you could just keep counting up the number of quarters and, and then just divide it by four. And you come up with the same answer. Well, actually, let me go ahead and do that just to show you guys. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So that's 21 quarters. It's 21 over 4, and you're going to come up with the same thing as 5 and 1 quarter. So there's more than one way to do these, and I showed you guys this last week. So let's just jump into the next page here. I'm looking at the guided practice. Number one says, what is three quarters of a ribbon that is seven feet long? Well, we just did a problem very similar to that. It's going to be three quarters times simply seven over one. Now, number two is a little bit tricky. And actually, on the handout that I haven't given you guys yet, on some problems that I want you to do, you're going to have a, one of the problems is going to be similar to this. So... It says explain how, and here's the first part, 3 quarters times 7. And then 7 times 3 quarters. And then finally... 3 times 7 over 4. Are all related. And let me show you something. You know that you're going to change each one of these. And I'm just going to move them down. By making the whole number into a fraction. So this is going to be 3 quarters times 7 over 1. This is going to be 7 times, oops, 7 over 1 times 3 quarters. And this is going to be 3 over 1 times 7 over 4. Okay? Look at this for a moment. You know this is going to end up being, as far as the numerators, 3 times 7. This one here, you also know it's going to be what? 3 times 7. Well, what's this one? 3 times 7. And when I went ahead and converted the whole number into a fraction, that's exactly what happened. This is going to be 3 times 7. That's going to be 21. That's 3 times 7. Or 7 times 3 is 21. And so is this one. They're all going to be the same. They're all going to be the same. So in this handout that I'm going to give you in a little while, look for a problem like that. 
All right. Okay, let's see here. So, number two. It says explain how they're related. And you could just put that in your own words and go ahead and answer. I want you to answer number two also. You can scratch out three, four, and five. I'm not worried about those. You can scratch out six, seven, and eight also. So I asked the last class, I said, which one do you guys want me to do? They said number 15, but I'll pull a stick here. Look at 9 through 16 and see if there's another one that you'd rather have me do. Or I could do the same one. It doesn't matter to me. Miss Robinson, I pulled your stick. Which one, 9 through 16, would you like to see me do? 16. 16. Okay, so I'm going to do number 16. So that's 900 times 2 ninths. Well... Um, that's going to be the same thing as 900 over 1 times 2 ninths. So what's, what's 900 times 2? 1,800. 1, so I'll put down 1,800. Okay. And then what goes underneath? 1 times 9? That's 9. So in a problem like this, we could ignore the first couple zeros in 1800 and ask ourselves, how many times does 9 go into 18? Two times. two times. But then what do we do with those two zeros? Add them, Add them back in. So there's your answer to number 16. It's going to be 200. Okay? No. Nope. All right. Uh, I will say that 15, the answer will be a whole number if you do your math correctly. There won't be a decimal, there won't be a fraction, there won't be part of it left over. It should be a whole number, okay? Okay, uh, next page, problem solving. Number 17. It says about 0.6 of the human body is made up of water, and if a person has a mass of 75 kilograms, what's the mass of the person's uh, water in this person's body? Well, you know it's going to be 75 times 0.6. And you could set this up if you wanted as 75 times, and you could put uh, 0.6. It's going to be the same thing. And then just don't forget to move the decimal over after you get your answer. Number 18. So I want you to do 17. I want you to do 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Number 18, number sense. It says, how can you use mental math to find, and I had already written on this from the previous class. I think it's, it's 25, isn't it? Times 3 tenths. Yeah. Okay. You should know by now, you should recognize by now that when you have a whole number and it's being multiplied by a fraction, you know the whole number is going to end up being multiplied by the numerator. Those two we're going to multiply together. Because all we do is we just turn 25 into 25 over 1. 25 over 1 times 3 tenths. Okay, so it's just going to be 25 times 3. Well, what's 25 times 3? 75. 75. So then 75 divided by, yeah, 75 over 10 or 75 divided by 10. It's going to be 7.5. That's your answer to that one. 7.5 to number 18. Number 19, during a nature walk, Jill identified 20 species of animals and plants. Construct arguments, it says, Jill said that one-third of the species she identified were animals. Can this be correct? Well, I'm, I'm going to answer this for you. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not quite sure what the book says. I, I would just say yes. Um, she said that one-third of the species she identified were animals. Can this be correct? So it's going to be 20 times what? One-third. Okay. 
And then down here at B, it says, if three-fifths of the species Jill identified were animals, how many plants did Jill identify? So let's just set that aside for a moment. I want you guys to think about this. If I said five-sevenths um, of my students um, were girls, what fraction left would be boys? Two. Ms. Thornburg. Two sevenths. Two what? Sevenths. Two sevenths would be boys. Because we, we want it to equal a whole number. And for it to equal a whole number, the numerators would have to add up to the denominator. Because you know that 7 over 7 is 1, or 100%, or the whole. If I said um, if I said thirteen twentieths um, of let's see here of my books were fiction, what then would be nonfiction? Yes. Seven. Seven what? <coughs> seven twentieths would be nonfiction. And again, 13 and 7 is equal to 20. And so if you want to get a whole or 100%, it would be simply 20 over 20. So thinking about that, B should be pretty easy. If three fifths, um, of the species were animals, then it says, how many plants did Jill identify? Well, then it would be two-fifths, because that's what's left over. So it would be two-fifths times 20, and I'll let you figure that out. Because it says how many plants. So you're going to have to give a specific number, not a fraction. So what's left over is two-fifths, so it would be two-fifths times 20. All right, number 20 here, it says a rectangular paint painting is two feet long and five, six foot wide. What is the area of the painting? Area equals what? So, length, it's going to be two. Width is what? Two, six. Five, five, six. Five, six. So, two times five, six, and you'll get the area. All right, number 21. An art teacher makes a batch of purple paint by mixing three quarters of a cup of red, three quarters blue. If she mixes 13 batches, how many cups of purple paint will she have? Okay, so you need to add three quarters plus, we're adding, we're adding three quarters equals something. Whatever that is, it's going to be times what? Times 13. Okay. Anybody know off the top of their head what's 3 quarters plus 3 quarters? A few of you. Um, let's see here. All right, Miss Pettit, what is it? Uh, it would be 6 fourths. No. No. Oh, oh, I see what you did. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Um, I was thinking in the, in mixed number terms, but you're right. It'd be six fourths. All she did is just added three and three, and she's right. It'd be six fourths times thirteen. Okay. All right. Or as somebody said, one and one half. But this might actually be a little bit easier. One and one half times thirteen. If you convert this. To this, it might be a little bit easier. All right, number 22, the last one. It says a water molecule is made up of three atoms. It says one third of the atoms are oxygen. And so we're talking about one, one water molecule. That means 
one of the atoms is oxygen, and the remaining are hydrogen. So two-thirds, two-thirds of the atoms are hydrogen. And it says if there's 114 water molecules, how many hydrogen atoms are there? Two-thirds times what? There you go. That's it. And so you don't have to worry about, what is it, uh, 23, 20, 24. 24, I'm not worried about those. Mm -hmm. So you guys should know what I want you to do.